Good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening for the first time on YouTube Live for the monthly gathering. Gathering of members of the online study circle and others interested in Jin Shin Jitsu, being in movement, interested in the topic of the month or just in this art of being in general. Those of you who are already familiar with our monthly live casts know we're going to start off momentarily with a feeling exercise, sort of guided meditation into the topic of the month. It's not a meditation in the sense that you're supposed to go to some inner place of abstract silence, but a meditative feeling exercise into the topic of the month. So, let's get right started. I can always explain more later. Sit comfortably. Feel your feet on the ground. And with the next few exhalations, just make sure to land, land in the moment, land in what is here right now, land in your body and in your body's sensations. I suggest that you rest your palms, your hands, palms down on your knees or thighs so it doesn't look or feel like a specific meditation pose with a specific connotation to it, but rather that it feels like you're just sitting there, just an ordinary moment of life, albeit a very present and attentive one. Feel the expansion of your body in all directions. Activate your sense of hearing. And by that I don't mean make an effort to listen or to discern what there is to hear where you are. My invitation is simply and directly what I said. Activate your sense of hearing. What exactly you're hearing is not what we're after in this moment, but for you to have a sense that hearing is activated, that you have decided to activate that sense, that there is an openness. not limited to your ears alone, to let in sound and to hear. Chances are Activating your hearing, your sense of hearing in that way has further expanded the sense of spaciousness of your body and the sense of expansion of your body into space.
And while still feeling that, gently gather your attention at the center of your chest. The center between left and right. The center between front and back. And roughly the center between your Adam's apple and the pit of your stomach. Feel the center of that center. Feel a sort of unexpanded center of the center of the center of your chest, just a point that has no width or height or depth. It's simply a point to anchor your conscious awareness for a few moments. And then feel what front or the direction forward feels like from that center of the center of the center of your chest. Can that center that has no expansion in the midst of you who are in this moment as fully expanded into space as you physically can and energetically can, can this unexpanded, unexpanded center feel forward? And what is it like when it does? Can it feel backwards? And what does it feel like when it does? What do you feel like? When you have a clear sense, a clear sensation of the center of the center of the center of your chest and its relationship to front and back, a straight line forward, a straight line back.
then from the center of the center of the center of your chest feel a straight line down and another one up Notice all the sensations in your body as you feel the axis up, down, clearly in your body, in addition to the axis front, back. And the center of the center of the center of your chest feel in a straight line to the left and to the right as you feel this third axis coming in Are you feeling the center more strongly than before? Are you feeling your own expansion in space more? What else are you feeling? In a very subtle way, yet in a very clear one, you are probably feeling yourself at the center of your world of experience now. Now let's fill out that center, allow that unexpanded point we have been working with to fill out into, say, a golden energetic ball of sorts that is about the size of your fist. Allow that to be there full of life and full of energy as you inhale and as you exhale alike. Then allow it to beam with a strong luminous ray on each side. Not a line this time, not a laser beam, but a broad, almost slightly fuzzy beam of maybe honey-colored light or whatever color or colorlessness comes to you down into your abdomen. Feel a strong presence of light from the center of your chest down close to the center on both the left and the right side of your abdomen. Allow another beam on each side to rise up from that center of your chest through your throat, 
and eyes to the head and the brain. Possibly feeling a part of that light beaming out of your eyes, even through closed eyelids. Allow yourself next to become very conscious of the upper portion of your chest under the clavicles and near the top part of your shoulder blades, that top of the chest that we often forget about. Allow that to fill with light and aliveness. Taking in how that makes you feel. And then, little by little, let your whole chest fill up with light and energy, the middle part portion of it, and then down through the chest all the way to the kidney area, so it is wrapping around the back. Again, take note of what sensations exactly are created as you allow that light and energy to fill the middle and lower portion of your chest and engulf the kidneys. And then from the middle of the golden ball you are feeling at the center of your chest, allow one beam on each side to radiate out as though to give you wings and inspire your arms to spread and spread effortlessly but wide and flow and beam out the little finger. And whether you are just sensing that or whether you have actually allowed your arms to spread and your little fingers to beam, feel what it does to your body sense and to the way you are feeling in the world right now. Welcome again on what is a very hot summer evening here in Hamburg, Germany. Lovely to be with you and be talking about this hot flow, this flow, heart function energy flow of the month, a flow symbolized by the zodiac sign Leo. And those of you who are not listening to me for the first time know the warning that comes next. Do not take this function personally if you are a Leo 
and do not brush it off if you are not. Leoness in any human being symbolizes unquestioning self-affirmation, knowing literally that you are just the hot item in the center of your life, so to speak, that you are it, that this thing that you are now, that this radiance that you are in this moment is what you have to offer the world in this now. This isn't stupid or dumb or self-satisfied self-affirmation. It is informed self-affirmation that simply knows that what you are in this moment, in this breath, is the fruit of all that went before this moment and has shaped you to be who you are now. That radiance finds its full sense and unfoldment and dignity when it is contextualized by the fact that, of course, in this moment, as in any other moment of your life, you are changing, you are becoming. So you're saying yes to having become this and beaming out from there as you allow and facilitate the change that you are, the transformative process that you are. Heart function energy as a quality of self-affirmation that you can use to pause on before you go on to do the next thing or perform the next step of change. Heart function energy also, this meditation we have just done, as a way of remembering that center and stillness and being just as you are without pushing anyone or anything is something the world can greatly use at this time or any time. It is not the only flow, it is only one of 12 life-building, organ-building flows that we have. It is, however, in the context, say, of Chinese medicine, considered the ruler, the absolute ruler. It is, in Jin Shin Jitsu terminology, the strongest of the 12 organ function energy, and it speaks of the part of you that simply isn't eaten by doubt, the part of you that simply does not doubt the uniqueness of your value and path. That, as I said, doesn't imply in any way, shape or form that you're not willing or able or actually excited to keep changing. But to say yes to what's here right now and to consciously realize that as you are now, not as you hopefully will be one day, the best you can do is not to hide your light but let it shine to the best of your ability and to the greatest use of all. So that is heart function energy which is the flow of the month and with this flow we are entering the second cycle of chest, finger, face and toe flows. Organ function energy always journeys out from the vital center to go and seize the world or be something or someone in the world, then take home a good portion of a harvest from what you've gathered out there or what you've understood out there, etc. Then process all of that and make it your own with a, tof with a face flow and then feel it and become more alive and more vivid and, and uh, more full of regenerative and transformative energy. So for those of you who have not yet been in the online study circle or joined this journey through actually 15 months, three months as a general introduction to what organ function energy is and its different aspects, and then now the fifth of 12 months looking at one organ flow after the other. On the page that will be referenced at the end of this video, you can find more information about either the ongoing study circle or purchasing lifetime access to this 15-month course, eight of which are now up and running and the remaining months are to follow. So, I'm now going to the 
questions that people have submitted that students of the study circle or other students out there have submitted. A reminder to those who are watching this for the first time, um, currently uh, when I do my English Q&A, I also do a German one, that'll be tomorrow, it's always a Wednesday after the English one. Um, when I do the English one, I currently do tend to have space for questions from non-members. So if at any point you want to ask any questions about Jin Jin Jitsu and my approach to Jin Jin Jitsu being in movement or anything related to that, then do send me your questions at least two hours before the next Q&A. So the feeling exercise that we, that we started with ties seamlessly into the first question that I got from a member of the online study circle. Janna says, allow me to express my confusion regarding heart flow. You tell us in the self-help part that heart function energy implies a strong impetus down, a strong pulling down into yourself, a voyage down. I have trouble then with the discrepancy when I see that heart flow is an ascending flow. Can you clarify it for me? I certainly can. So in the feeling exercise, I first had everyone discover something that isn't heart function energy, but a direct experiential um, notion of what we feel like when what we call fifth depth in Jin Jin Jitsu is fully intact. That sense that I am what I am and what I am needs no excuses, as the song goes, or that I am exactly this, and the recognition that I am at the center of the world as I experience it, just as you are at the center of the world as you experience it. So the second step, though, was almost the circulation pattern of heart function energy, which happens to have five branches on each side of the body. So of course I didn't go into much anatomical detail, but heart function energy actually does have one branch that anchors the brilliance of I am this down into your stomach, into your gut, while another branch anchors it in your head, into your brain, and anchors it in the way your eyes beam into the world. Again, in Chinese medicine, they say heart function energy or heart meridian or the heart is the seat of Shen, that light, that consciousness, that life spirit. You have many different readings of what Shen actually means, but one of the ways it is noticed, it is recognized in Chinese medicine, which is not the same as Jin Chu Jitsu, but has a lot of commonalities, is in the radiance in a person's eyes. There's also something about the coloring of the cheek, but when a person is generally beaming, yeah, when a person is generally beaming, you would tend to say, you'd be fairly safe to say that their Shen is doing well. So there's that. There's the, the strong down that we need for the strong up to be possible, and then the upper portion of the chest to be filled is very, you know, for you to feel present up here is just as important as something down there looking after your kidneys, you know, enveloping your kidneys, which are your energetic reserve, which are your, your tranquilizers, if you will. I mean, the part where you know that all is well, that you have some energy left over, that you have reserves to live from and draw on when needed. And then there is a fifth branch going out to the arms and literally to the little finger. So the, the actual circulation pattern of heart function energy looks like it's ascending and descending and going out. It's just going in all directions. Now, the astrologers' hobby or, or experienced astrologers among you, of course, remember that the zodiac sign of Leo is governed by the sun. What does that mean for lay people's understanding? Well, sun, the sun, S-U-N, is the source of all light for the solar system in Jin Jin Jitsu. It symbolizes universal aliveness, 
transpersonal energy. It is universal aliveness, impersonal, transpersonal energy that governs the radiance you allow yourself as heart. You need to anchor that. You need to anchor it strongly into your sense of I am. You need to anchor it strongly into your body. And the comment that Jana refers to, thank you Jana for this beautiful question, um, came in the context of pointing out how the heart flow is actually harmonized. In Jin Chin Jutsu, we use seven steps and the last three touch parts of the body where the heart function energy doesn't go. The knee, the inside of the ankle and the big toe, the one, the five and the seven. And so I use that, if I'm not mistaken, to emphasize that in its application, in its harmonizing, heart flow really gets serious about anchoring our brilliance in the here, the now, the body, the doing, the living, the going to the bottom of things and not being afraid and saying yes to life as movement. That, uh, you know, go briefly through seven, five and one in this case. So, in what sense is heart function an ascending flow? Well, all flows that start in the chest and go to a finger are called ascending flows in Jin Shin Jitsu terminology because our posture of reference is one of a human being standing like this, arms up and legs down. And so it's ascending in the sense that it goes from chest to finger, right? But actually it's going out more than it is going up. And while its main branch is going out to the arm, we have now understood that it goes up, down and everywhere, or it wouldn't be complete as the Leo, the lion with its sun-like mane that it is, and that you are when you live from that function. Okay, that was a long answer to a juicy question. As we are on YouTube Live, I have a window open for the chat. As far as I can see, as far as I can tell, I can see if anybody writes anything into the chat, but if I'm not mistaken, nobody has done that yet. So, um, just to let you people know that I do have a chat window up here and who knows, maybe I can actually see what people write. Okay, on to the next question. Karen writes, thank you so much. Thanks so much for your invite to send some questions. I have two for you. I was intrigued by what you mentioned in the German online study circle about women being trained throughout the centuries to hold themselves back or in other more Leo related terms to not shine and how that could be linked to the heart function energy. It got me reflecting on how gender, race and culture specific norms and expectations might impact the flow of different organ function energies, which I had not considered before. I know it's always tricky to make any generalizations in this sense, but I wonder if you'd be happy to expand on this further, seeing especially also, especially also your experience of treating people in different countries. Well, um, let me... take that question to a very, very general framework. I, I did, I guess, point out that um, uh, uh, all right, what I'm looking for is, is to not get into the specifics of the terms that you've mentioned, not because I think they need to be avoided, but because um, because I want to, us to understand the big picture, the general picture. Um, I think that understanding organ function energy understand, helps us understand that we are meant to be, that we are designed to be a much, much fuller expression of universal aliveness than we generally think, 
then we are generally encouraged to do or be, or say, or think, or feel. And this I find in East, West, North and South. So um, it is often considered good because humble not to want to own too much space for yourself, for example. And I think that it is how you own the space that you claim for yourself that makes the difference. But I do think we all come equipped with a full expectation to own our space, to inhabit it fully. And rather than saying how, how do you phrase it? Yeah, once we understand who each of the organ function energies are, we can then check for ourselves, independently of our age and race and gender, etc., etc., maybe for those who are not familiar or not comfortable with the term gender. You know, let me just very, very briefly summarize what exactly is meant by that. Sex, biological sex, is are you a man, are you a woman, are you born into a male or a female body or one that does not clearly fall into either category. Gender is what you have been taught that since you are a woman you must now behave in such and such a way or since you are a man you must now behave in such and such a way, right? So gender refers to behavior that is expected of you, qualities that are ascribed to you because of your biological sex. and. Um, this, of course, varies with culture, but as each of us understands more deeply the universal principles behind organ function energy, we can then check individually, have I found my way of expressing the aspect that says I'm here to raise my voice, be heard, and take part in what the world has to offer? Have I found my individual way of living that universal truth, which is lung function energy? Huh? Have I found my individual expression of saying, look, this is the abundance that I call mine? Yeah? The universal principle of Taurus lived individually. Or have I fallen in pray, for example, to some ideology that says that you shouldn't, one shouldn't, nobody should, or your kind shouldn't pretend to claim or enjoy claiming some or any abundance for him or her or themselves, right? Have you found the area of life in which, ha, all this is mine? applies to you in a joyful way, or is that still waiting to be integrated? So that is the more universal and more universalist question. I don't want to go into detail, I certainly don't, about, well, in this culture or religion or blah, 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 they, you know, speak ill of this aspect, and in that context they forbid such an aspect. I mean, it's, it's because the principles are universal, we all need to digest and process life and experiences and information and make them our own, that's universal, and we each have our own way of digesting it. Yeah? I just don't believe that some people need space in life and others are quite content hardly existing at all. I simply don't believe that some people are the types who love the abundance of life, physical, emotional, or spiritual, whereas others say, oh no, I'm quite happy leaving abundance on all these levels to others. I simply don't believe that some people process life and digest it and network about it, while others say, oh, I'm quite happy leaving it undigested. I don't believe that some people love to feel themselves alive, whereas others say, oh, I'd rather not feel. We can get to a point where feeling has become identified as something so dangerous, or indeed being radiant, has become identified as something so dangerous in my context that I try not to let anybody know, but even so, the aliveness in me, this is my contention, the aliveness in me will not forget that I, like all living human beings, came here to find my individualized expression of that universal principle. That's exactly what we go into with organ function energy. I hope that is a comprehensible, understandable, 
response to all listening now or later. Second question of Karen's, with the recent heat waves, I hope I'll get through all the questions. Um, with the recent heat waves, I had questions coming away regarding how Jin Jin Jitsu might help regulate or harmonize our body temperature. As I researched this, the safety energy locks 8 kept coming up, including what the left and right side might help with regarding heating or cooling the body. From what I found, this information did not always correspond, and I found myself resonating with those advocating simplicity. That is, holding both safety energy locks without imposing our own conscious intent of heating or cooling over the universal one of harmony. And I'd really welcome any thoughts you might have on this and your own experience of harmonizing body temperature. Well, I'm so glad you brought that up because it is part of the richness of having studied with Mary that if you listen to any number of her students, you would be sure to find those who had written down that left aid cools and right aid warms the body and those who had written down the contrary. Had Mary said it differently at times? Had some people gotten it right and some people gotten it wrong? It just simply is such a simple and smart approach to hold them both. My personal experience is that I I take a different approach to feeling hot or cold. I don't so much look for a button that'll cool my body temperature if I'm feeling hot, or the, the, the contrary. I go to where is the, the discrepancy between me and the moment? Where have I shifted into a sense of opposition to the moment? Yeah? Uh, our bodies are equipped to feel hot. They sweat when we are hot, they, they do what they do, you know, they, are, they come with a very sophisticated system of adaptation. The, the, the danger of the well-intended practical language of Jin Jin Jitsu that calls eight the thermostat for the body is that it makes us extend our technological expectations or the expectations we have of technology to keep us comfortable. You know, we want life to be a constant 68 degree deal. I said at one point 68 degree Fahrenheit, you know, life is not supposed to be the same room temperature in body, mind or spirit always. That would be a very tepid, lukewarm life. So I think our bodies and minds and spirits are well equipped to, um, to deal with great variations of mental, emotional and physical heat. And feeling where am I? Am I besides myself? What can I do to land in myself? Am I fighting this moment? What can I do to land in the moment? Adaptation, thanks to Safety Energy Locks 22, can be a helper for that. Spleen Function Energy can be a helper for that. But yes, the AIDS do often come up and they have helped many people. They just haven't happened to be my particular point of emphasis in that context quite differently from, say, the context of elimination, you know, constipation, diarrhea, where they also come up. I do enjoy holding my aids if anything seems out of balance or even just the feeling around my body's holding on or being unable to hold. My pelvic area, my energetic pelvic area, feeling either crazed in holding something back or unable to do so, I do enjoy sitting down holding both aids very consciously, sinking with my bodily sensation into the lower pelvic area, into the base, that is more or less the perineum area, and make myself energetically at home there. That generally is all that is needed to both regulate elimination, let the body self-regulate elimination and help me land in the moment and in my body as it is and as it's feeling, as I mentioned earlier in the context of heat. Thank you, Karen, for these two questions. Taj, on to your questions and feedback. Feedback comes first. 
Hello, Matthias. In the April online conference call, you gave a practice tip of receiving the inhale and releasing the exhale. It really enhanced my Jin Jitsu experiences. Last month, you gave another tip of similar significance. Of feeling the flow quality as I practiced, as opposed to just doing the flow pattern. Thank you for these. They both take my Jin Jitsu self-help much more alive know myself. I have an amazing to me experience with that one twelfth of bodybuilding in terms of repair. Help myself. I recently stressed my right knee. I have been delicately favoring it since then. Last week I was starting my walk. As I was starting my walk I noticed it felt pretty good and so was chugging along when all of a sudden I noticed I didn't it the knee didn't like the pace or something else. I stopped immediately and felt the painful discomfort. I knew that before I turned back, something needed to be tended right then and there. So I stepped into the shade and did the stomach flow, left stomach flow. Really settled into being with the breath. Okay, left stomach flow, right knee. Huh? Just for everybody's information is what Taj is referring to here. Really settled into being with the breath and feeling of the flow. At the end, when I checked how walking felt, much to my amazement, there was no pain or discomfort. I chose to continue my walk instead of turning back, walking with a heightened sense of presence, I might add, and I just discovered your free offering resources for these times. I'll read that bit of feedback on in just a second. I just want to emphasize just how important or what the key takeaway is to to what Taj shared in this much of her feedback. And that is um, that when you feel discomfort, if you can at all, stop immediately and feel what it feels like and inhabit the area of your body that seems to be suffering. So that is what you do and then if there is something you know how to jump a cable, uh, go ahead and do that. Um, it could have been another flow potentially, but here what came to touch very clearly was the stomach flow, the opposite stomach flow that crosses into that knee with three of its four lines. One line crosses into the same, uh, goes, descends into the same side knee also, by the way. But there are these lines that cross to the opposite side. And uh, another takeaway there is that when we don't do the usual, my body is hurting, I'd better pull back from that activity. This conversation is hurting, I'd better pull back from this conversation. You know, it's, this is often the other thing we know between heroically confronting something. Conversation isn't comfortable, well, I'm just going to go for it. Or it doesn't feel good to walk, I'm just going to keep exercising. And the middle path is what Taj just related here. It's feel what it needs, feel what is needed, see what help can come. Very often you will find that your body, and in many cases your psyche, enjoys being taken seriously when it has discomfort, enjoys getting the attention of what it might require to help one through that discomfort and then walk on. You would of course never walk on if the knee is still hurting after the self-help. You would not continue the conversation if after you have found back to your center you still feel it's overwhelming you and it's too much and it's not something you want to continue. But any time we find that we can, with a heightened sense of awareness and generally slowing down, whatever it is required for us to be more mindful, to have a heightened sense of awareness about it, to then continue is often what our system of body, mind and spirit likes best because it reminds it of its agency, it reminds it of how things work and it can deal with it very, very well. Okay, so let me just say one last time, emphasize one more time, this is not 
at all a recommendation to push through pain. Take it seriously, see what you can do to relieve it. If it is relieved with heightened awareness, continue what you were doing and see what that feels like. All right, so Taj was going into feedback about the free offering. It's, it consists of 15 chapters, 15 episodes, and I've done it in English and German and Spanish and in French. So um, the Spanish version, if you have any Spanish-speaking friends, is also on my English language site. At the end of our livecast, I'll put up this chart for a longer time. So you see the English, the French and the German. If you or anybody you know is looking for the Spanish version of this free offering, then send them to the English page. That's where they'll find uh, Recursos en este periodo, I think is the title in Spanish. So this is something I made uh, when the first lockdown in 2020 happened because of COVID. That's what um, Tash is referring to, so check it out. She claims it's an absolute treasure. I've used the breath, a guided meditation before bed. Wipes my mind clean and deeply relaxes my body. I'm very eager to spend time with my inner space, as you suggest. That's another video. Thank you for the caring effort you put in and for sharing so profoundly and freely. It's a lovely link for sharing indeed, everyone. If you know any people who might want help with staying centered in these times, send them over there. Hmm, how much it is worth to have such a tool right here in my hands, a tool not only to repair, but to experience and express joy in my life. Hmm. Well, you said we could ask any question. Taj continues, here goes. Safety energy locks. In this month's material, you made brief mention of auxiliary safety energy locks like High 1, High 19, Low 8. I wonder if you would speak more about them, like how come they don't have their own numbers? How are they functionally different from the regular 26 safety energy locks? What's behind the recommendation to choose, for example, a high one over a regular safety energy lock one? As is done in both lung safety energy lock quickie and stomach special body function quickie. All right, so um, the answer I most often gave to this over the years or in years past when I was teaching the basic five-day seminar was that, and, and I still think this answer holds mostly true, my understanding is that high, low and lateral versions of safety energy locks, high 19, high 1, low 8, central low 8, lateral low 8, and lateral 22 are more on a body level, more on a functional level. I generally hear them referred to for specific physical discomforts. So high ones on the insides of the thighs, about a hand's width above the knee, sensitive spots are often found there, can be used for any Abdominal discomfort, you will often hear it referenced. High 19s here at the upper arm for respiratory or other chest discomforts. And so on, there's also a back of high 19. So you turn around the arm to the, to the back of it, that's back of high 19. It helps the front portion of the chest and the front high 19 helps the back portion of the chest. So lung and heart and emotions and chest and breast. And, any time you hear reference to them, it seems to be more on the physical level, with a few exceptions. As you mentioned, why is it high one on the safety energy lock level for lung function energy? Well, that will have to be remain, have to remain either a guess or a mystery, um, because when Mary gives four quickies for each organ function energy, one on main central level always refers to a vertebra in the spine that relates to the organ, one on safety energy lock level generally refers to the meaning of a safety energy lock. Safety energy locks are seats of meaning in the body. 
they are the place where a certain vibration lives. In the case of number one, it's the prime mover, it's the original or primal yes to life as movement. And when you look at what lung function energy is in the cycle of 12 organ function energy, it certainly is the initial yes to life as movement and the initial yes to your active participation in life as an actor of it. So should it have been one rather than high one? Possibly. The difference between energy locks and their high, low and lateral versions I think I've pretty much explained for the most part. The seed of what the meaning of the number is, is in the energy lock. And something still related to it lives in the high, low or lateral versions. Okay. Safety energy lock groupings. Why do we put so much attention on bust line, waist line, hip line? Oh, well, <laughs> because bust line, waist line, hip line corresponding to safety energy locks 13 at the bust line, 14 underneath the rib cage, and 15 at the groin are three safety energy locks and three levels of existence spirit, mind, body. Heaven, human being, earth are some of the terms that Mary uses here. And in the beginning, when I first briefly read your, your question, I thought, ah, I guess she hasn't seen my offerings on 13, 14, 15 yet. But then I remembered, oh wait, but those are all in German. On my Instagram, I went into, I, I, I did Insta, Insta stories of a minute each that I later uh, store, um, stored there as um, videos that one can still watch, but they are in German. So for a minute, I speak about 13 moments and 14 moments and 15 moments. And then I made three more videos, what 13 moments heal and what 14 moments heal and what 15 moments heal. And it was fun because it was very, very brief. And over the years, I've often taught in different languages, but more often in German than in any other language, a class called 13, 14, 15, three safety energy locks, three levels. So there's a short free online course in German called The World of 13, 14, 15. <laughs> Not much use to you in this context, is it? But 13 is, let me just be as brief as I can about a subject I feel so passionately about. Here, in this area, in the chest area, is where everything in you that is interested in the world, this world and beyond, yeah? it, where your spark of interest, of desire, of curiosity, of vision, of, of creative impulses lies and lives. That lives here. That's more than just one safety energy lock. That is, that is what motivates and moves me to become and become and become and keep becoming, which is why 13 is called the Fountain of Youth. So it's a universal principle. It is one of 26 energy locks and it is an aspect of each process, of each step you take that's always there. The fire for it, the desire for it, the appetite for it. Then, the, now how do we go about this? How do we process this? How can this be digested? How can I put it into words? How can I put it into imagery? How can I make it mine? That's what 14 as the mind level, as physical and mental and emotional digestion busies itself with. There's always a, all right, this is what we desire, 13, how do we go about it, 14. And what do we end up with, 15. So 15 at the groin is how have I landed in what I'm doing right now? How fully have I landed in the experience? Am I sitting in the experience, so to speak? Am I seated in the middle of it? Joy, laughter, happiness is a meaning many know the 15 to have 
and I take that to be not the joy of, oh, I wanted something, I planned it out well, and now I'm happy because it all worked out the way I wanted it. It's much more, I'm so full of desire and fire and vision and aliveness and creativity that I did the best I could to figure out the ways I thought might work and now I'm sitting in the experience that at times confirms this is exactly what I wanted, at times informs me it's better than I could have expected, and at times informs me, oh, this is very different or quite a bit worse than I expected. And in each case, you can be sitting so centrally and comfortably and intensely in the experience that the experience itself is joyous. So that's just a small glimpse of why we spend so much time talking about bust line, waist line, hip line. We've come to the end of our hour, but I'll briefly run through the remaining questions that you sent me and see if I can answer them here or if I leave them for next month. How are safety energy locks associated with bust line, waistline, hip line assigned? Well, there are those that literally live at that level in the body, of course. Um, but you explain why you're asking that. For example, in my notes I have, in addition to the obvious by placement safety energy locks, I also have safety energy lock 7 and high 1 assigned to bust line. Well, these assignments would then have to do with a variety of things. It could either be, hold this, it clears breathing and emotions, it clears the bust line. Or it could be top middle and bottom are found again and again and again in so many parts of the body. If you look to self up Book 3, Mary Burmeister's self up Book 3, you will find a lot of detail about that. Top one-third of each finger, top one-third of each toe relates to top one-third of your, of your torso. So, bust line, middle waistline, bottom hip line. Same goes for palm of hand, same goes for sole of foot. But then there is the bust line, waist line, hip line on the arm as well. Yeah? So top helps top, middle helps middle, bottom helps bottom. Then you have that in the neck, top, middle, bottom. And that's how most of those correspondences come into being. Are these groupings in any of the texts? Nope, for the most part they are not but this is the logic behind them. Are the organ function energies assigned to bust line, waist line, and hip line? If so, who goes where? Well, uh, Taj, if I'm not mistaken, you have the book Building a Life. Pages 9 and 10 in that book go into it. And I will comment on that question next month because it's a more elaborate answer than I feel I should fit into this hour that we've already gone over on. Because of course some organ function energies relate to organs that are more on bust line, on waist line, or on hip line, but then there are other energetic relationships. We need more time to look into that in greater depth, so I'll make a note of the fact that this is something I haven't answered and we'll take it into next month's a and Q. I'm assuming you continue that the safety energy locks and elements are connected according to the depths, yes? Um, mostly no, actually. But I'll go into more of that next month as well. And the final question, why are the first method of correction, second method of correction, and third, third method of correction called that? Actually, they are called that and not called that. If you look at what's printed in Mary's books, it's first method correction, second method correction, third method correction. If I'm not mistaken, the of doesn't uh, appear there. But yeah, it's unusual to call anything in Jin Jin Jitsu a correction. And my understanding is that they are called that because what distinguishes them from all the other flows in the textbooks is that they deal with all three levels, the unmanifest, the manifesting, 
and the manifest level all at once. They are apt to harmonize deep disharmony, disharmony that has gotten deeply into the system, sometimes beginning at the manifest level and uh, then um, affecting the manifesting level, the organ function energy level, and finally the unmanifest level, or at times the origin could be um, on, a, on a different level. You could have started at, say, uh, universal harmonizing energy, the unmanifest level, or main central supervisor mediator, and leaked into organ function and then special body function energy. So there's a deep harmonizing action. There is actually a corrective action. It corrects something, or is capable at least, it doesn't mean we only use it for that, but it is capable of profoundly bringing back to harmony or correcting something that has deeply lost its harmony. That's as far as we'll go tonight. Thank you so much for being here with us for the premiere on YouTube. Um, as far as I can tell, everything worked just well. And I'm so happy if it turns out to be that way and look forward to seeing you here again next month. Here is the chart that gives you the links to my different online offerings. These are also the pages where you can sign up for the newsletter in each of those respective languages. So, thank you very much for being here today and we will see you next time.